Good evening and welcome to the second pilot of How Hutch Cooks. The producers have let us uh, run a second pilot so long as we uh, increase the production value. So let's see how we go. To start with, to increase the production value, clearly we've got rid of the rubbish tins, that were, rubbish bags that were hanging off the door and the uh, blatant inadvertent advertising of Gasman last week. And, uh, and we're going to maintain our uh, independence, our fierce independence, uh, that's a gratuitous adjective, um, for as long as we can. Um, so moving on, the second thing to, uh, I did during the week was look for a picture of food or fruit or a painting or because every good cooking show has a picture on the wall. Couldn't find one. So, Joan, um, there might be a job for you. Remembering back to Michael Bonaccini's uh, uh, show, he actually had his bike hanging on the wall. So to break up the plain wall that you all had to stare at last week, I've hung up a golf club. So the, the uh, production value is well increased. Um, Moving on, we're going to, before I start cooking tonight, I want to introduce a new segment called They Know or You Know Who You Are, um, just to celebrate some things that might have happened through the week. And to start off, I'd like to, uh, during the week, last night actually, in our Zoom meeting with some friends, we found out that Dale and Evan uh, on Thursday got engaged. Dale and Evan, uh, congratulations, it's great news. Um, I know six, of six or seven pseudo aunties and uncles that can't wait for this isolation to end and come and celebrate it with you. And they know who they are. Secondly, Sam had a birthday uh, today. It's Sam's birthday today. This has been filmed on Sunday. So happy birthday, Sam. Sam, uh, wasn't happy with the donuts that Gavin had given her for her birthday, so she went out and bought a house. So congratulations, Sam. And then lastly, on last Wednesday, Wendy and I were uh, celebrated our 30th wedding anniversary with Doug and Russ and Katie and the dog, Katie, as well. Uh, we had a great night. Had some eating choys and celebrated with some Dom. Uh, kindly, uh, uh, President, present, presented, presented, presented to us uh, to help us celebrate by Andrew, from Andrew. So we had a great night reminiscing over uh, uh, 30 years and over choys and some Dom. So uh, that's tonight's edition of you know who you are. All right, to get on with the cooking. Tonight we're going to try uh, something that's not that, it, it, we'll start again, something that's uh, not as difficult as you might think it is. And uh, when you're bored, maybe it's something you can have, you forget about and that you really like. So we're going to do some grilled whiting in panko breadcrumbs. To start off with, I've cut up uh, five potatoes, and I've just broken the rule, I just realised I can't count. Five potatoes and a sweet potato. My rule is, like the teapot rule, you cook one potato for each person and one for the pot, just like with a cup of tea. However, I've put in five potatoes, thinking Doug was here. There's only three of us, so I've stuffed that rule up right from the start. All right, I'm gonna par boil these and put them in the oven. Uh, they're chips of about one centimetre square, although you can't have square round chips or whatever, but that's, uh, that's what I've cut them up to. Now, to par boil, they're, they're, I'll come back and screen, hold on. Plenty of chips, I can tell you. Right. As we said last week, root vegetables, you boil from cold. Anything under the ground, we boil from cold. Also, 
we use cold water for pasta and and uh, parboiling and anything where we have to boil use water from the cold tap. Uh, my theory is that hot water comes through copper pipes and copper pipes can uh, release the heavy metals so it's healthier um, I believe to use cold water out of galvanised pipes. Mind you, I think most piping these days is either galvanised or, or PVC. Anyway, They'll be on, parboil them for about five minutes. After that, we will put them in the oven and, uh, and see how they turn out. While they're doing that, I'm going to, uh, I didn't have any, uh, no, I did have. I want to try and make some mayonnaise, uh, not mayonnaise, tartar sauce. Um, I didn't have a recipe, so I looked up the Google machine and I've got a recipe for tartar sauce that I'll try and show you now. We make this first because apparently it's got to sit and let those flavours infuse into the mayonnaise. So, to start this tartar sauce, I've just bought some whole egg mayonnaise. Well, we bought it a while ago. And I'm going to put some whole egg mayonnaise into here. Enough for the three of us. Alright. There we go. That should be alright. All good. I'll leave mayonnaise. I'm safe, way. Put that back because I'm running out of venture at night. Into the mayonnaise, I think we'll put... I've cut up very finely a shallot. Put some shallot in. And uh, what else? I bought some gherkins. Well, they call them. Oh, I can't even read with the glass. Doesn't matter. Here they go on the stove. Corner chons. They look like gherkins. I couldn't read in the shop either. So we'll chop a we'll chop a few of these up. Corner chons in vinegar. Maybe I should have chopped these up earlier. In fact, I won't bore you with me chopping up. I'll, uh, I'll come back in a few minutes. I'll come back in a few minutes. Okay, back again. Um, I don't know if you can see, but I've cut, cut up a fair swag of these uh, corner chons that I thought were gherkins. Corner chons. Anyway, they look the same, so chances are they'll taste like chicken. Put them into the into the melting pot, and in they go. Give them a bit of a stir. That's the start of that. Um, I'm going to put in just a little bit of mustard. Give it another bit of flavour. Not much. Half a teaspoon to a teaspoon of mustard. Stir that in. Now, in this secret recipe, secret recipe I'm going to put some Worcestershire sauce in not much I'm looking for recipes with Worcestershire sauce no, do. when mum when we had to put mum into the nursing home last year and we cleaned out her cupboards she had five Five bottles of Worcestershire sauce. So any recipe with Worcestershire sauce in it at the moment is a good recipe. Coming together okay. Um, I've left the capers in the fridge, so I'll turn it off because I know I won't be able to find them for a while. Be back soon. All right, 
found the capers, uh, I've spooned out about a tablespoon full. I'm just going to give them a quick rough chop on the chopping board before I put them into the half finished so the sauce or three quarter finished. There they go, that's pretty good. So nothing wrong with capers. So in go the capers with the gherkins and the shallots and you stir that in. Now you can probably hear going away in the background, boiling away the uh, uh, the potatoes and sweet potato sweet potato chips. What we're going to do now, and they're going to take the longest, so I'm going to get my baking trays. Rip off some greaseproof paper. Wendy doesn't like to have to buy some real stuff, apparently. Crunch it up. Do another one because there seems to be more than I counted on. Crunch it up. Put a bit of oil in the bottom so that it stays in the bottom. Like that. And we'll drain the potatoes because I think they've been, been going car uh, cooking long enough and we want them to just roast a little bit in the oven. Back again and uh, we'll just push these into these baking trays. It's a bit bigger. That's all good. And the start off. Oh, jeez, it's warm. Probably left on just a little bit long too. Anyway, we'll see how they turn out. They're a bit past par cooking. I left them on a bit long. Bit of salt. So they'll roughen up and roast a bit probably, but who cares? And everyone loves olive oil. There we go. One of your chips. Just want to leave them like that for the minute. Put them in the oven and let them cool down and dry out a bit. They're in the oven, ready to go. Get rid of this. And we'll finish off the tartar sauce um, with a bit of lemon and a bit of salt and pepper. So we'll just squeeze half a lemon. It'll do. Put that in. And a bit of dill. Now, I didn't have any fresh dill. I didn't grow it in the garden, so I had to buy some of this dried dill. And it's not gonna unpeel. That's all right. I'll get that. Oh, geez. This could be a disaster. There's a little bit of dill in there. That didn't go too bad. Didn't have any uh, any shaker on it. Chances are I was going to put the whole lot in. Dill and uh, just a shade of pepper. We'll probably have another go at this when we get around to serving it, but it's meant to spend a little bit of time in the fridge. There's some pepper. And, and we'll put in a bit of salt. Everything's ground these days, isn't it? Eh? No. Put the finger in and taste it. Mm. We'll give it a bit of time, put a bit of lemon and salt in it, and we'll let those shallots and capers and all that get through it, and we'll see what it's like in a little while. All right, I'll just clean up this bench for a minute, and we'll come back and start preparing the whiting. 
Okie dokie, back again, ready to just prepare the whiting. Um, we've gone through, we don't know how the, the tartar sauce will turn out, but it should be okay, but if it's too messy, I recommend Beerenberg tartar sauce, and even better, and I couldn't find any today, is Taylor's tartar sauce. So you don't have to waste time. These tomato tartar sauces are terrific. Um, I wouldn't try any of the others actually. I've tried them and they're not so good. Anyway, that's the tartar sauce. I don't know how they make it, but they probably don't use Worcestershire sauce. All right. I went to uh, Chadston today, or might not, just I don't know, and bought three whole whitings for Wendy, Russ, and myself. Um, and ask them to fill it and leave the skin on. I've got the whiting here on the plate, as you can see, and I'd just like to towel them down first a little bit, just to get rid of the excess moisture. So we just paper dry them before we get them ready for frying or grilling, grilling, whatever you want to call it. Just, just a bit of quick paper towel down. And pre already I've set up three bowls. You can probably see them around me. One with nothing special, flour, egg, and bread, and panko crumb, bread crumbs. All that you would expect. If you put them in order, it doesn't take too long. It doesn't take too long at all to get them ready to grill. The fish is actually the easy part. Those chips will be the longest. And Anyway, that's all right. All right, so we paper towel down the, uh, the whiting. We've got our ingredients together. Now you can do this with tongs or, or, um, or your hands. You know, we like our hands because we love it a bit. What I'm gonna do though is get some water. Just put it in a bowl because I'm not near my sink and that just helps me keep my hands a bit drop a bit cleaner. All right, into the flour goes the, uh, goes the uh, fillet, run it through the egg. I just got two eggs, probably only needed one. Uh, it's, they're slippery suckers when you do this, but, uh, but the love gets into it in your hand, just like squashing tomatoes. Flip it over into the panko, pour some panko onto them. Set them aside on a plate, ready to grill when everything else is ready to come together. They'll take five to 10 minutes, so that's how you time it. You don't need to see me prepare for six pieces of whiting, so I'll do that and be back shortly. All right, back again. Uh, I've prepared the fish. That probably took five or so minutes and I'll show you that in a minute. I've taken the uh, chips out of the oven, given them a rattle around. I'd bought cheap greaseproof paper, it didn't, was sticking to that a bit, so I've taken them out of that. And I'm gonna put them in and they should be ready when everything else comes together. So into the oven they'll go again with a bit more olive oil and a bit more salt that I put on them. Here we go. One, two, all right. Before we get into the fish, uh, I've got a little salad to make. Um, it's just, uh, I've washed the lettuce, let it drain, I've got rid of the water. A little bit of lettuce, that was just one heart of Cos Heart from Safeway. Um, I'll put in some, I've got a cucumber, they're bloody big things, so I'll put in a handful of cucumber, because Duck Russ likes cucumber. I chopped up a quarter of a capsicum, sliced up about 10, um, uh, what do you call them, tomatoes, the little ones, forget what you call them. Uh, little bit of 
red onion. This is just, maybe I've made a bit, that was half an onion, that looks like plenty. And I'm, I'm gonna put in some avocado, because I love avocado, if I could find the knife. Clean the knife up, didn't I? I bought these little avocados, I never used to like them, because they were always rock hard when you bought them. And, but actually they're really good. They ripen up, you get about five in a pack, and you don't leave half in the fridge. You can finish the whole one in a sitting. And uh, so you don't let, let these great fruit right in the fridge, if that's what you do at your house. I know that happens here. So I'm just gonna put these avocados in. Beautiful, they've ripened up. They were rock hard when I bought them a few days ago. Beautifully ripe now. And, uh, oh, geez, it came out. How lucky is that? Now I can't get off the knife if I can. Squash the abo, it doesn't matter. Run it through. Just to get a bit chunky. Reverse it out. Tip it into there. Whoa. Try not to let the skin in. Now, when I prepared the fish, I was rushing a bit. They're probably a little bit eggy. I didn't let it drain off as long as I normally would. And I think you're also, some people say you should put a little bit of salt on your seafood out of the sea fish. I didn't do that either, but you can put salt on later. Shouldn't make any difference. All right, that's, that's the uh, salad. Russ wanted a quick dressing. I don't know how to make dressing, so let's have a go in what he told me. So you put in a bit of olive oil, apparently. Oh, geez, that's slow. A little bit of olive oil. A little bit of balsamic vinegar, if you can get the lid off. That looks all right. And you reckon you put a little bit of honey in it? So we'll put a little bit of honey in, but not much, he said. Just a drop. I'll put a squeeze of that lemon in. And we're going to touch of mustard. I think I'll leave the Worcestershire sauce out. Touch of mustard. Don't know what this will be like. All these things are on the bench, so you might as well use them. Salt. Everything loves salt, they reckon. Except me, because I can't find it. There it is. Right. The salt. We'll stir that around. With the wrong end of a spoon. I think I'm meant to leave this now. It's probably best not to dress it. Probably best not to dress it until we're ready to feed it. Which isn't far away, hang on, hang in. You might taste that. Mm. Taste the honey. Bloody good. Might put a bit more vinegar in. Put a bit more oil. And we'll stand those aside. Ready for the final countdown. Ready for the final countdown. All right. Nearly there. Get rid of the plastic. On with the stove. I put the. I've got a bigger fry pan. I'm going to do a little bit in my favourite skillet later, but in the in my bigger fry pan. I'm going to put a bit of olive oil. And you know, couldn't resist putting some butter. Now, 
Now, there's breadcrumbs on this, so they absorb a bit of this, but that's okay. Put a bit more olive oil. Make sure the bottom of the pan has got it everywhere. I'll probably cook these in threes, I think. Get out of, I've got my tongs. Right, just let this settle down and melt. The other thing we're going to do, the other thing I've got some, I've got some uh, snow peas that I'm going to do as well. There you go, I'm getting the skillet. I'll put them on there. I'll put them on the six, six out of ten. Uh, you get a choice of one to ten on this. Uh, Cooker. Mm. Alright. Butter's melted. Or yeah, whatever you call it. I don't know if you can see those fillets, but they're looking okay. Maybe a little bit eggy if anything, but that won't matter. Just didn't let it drain off in the hurry. Now I put them in skin side down and make sure they don't stick for a while. And just put one. Two, three. I can't get them all in in one cook, so I might as well do them in two. We'll just let them go. Cook there. I'll turn them over in about five minutes. Give them another minute or so on the other side while I'm uh, dealing with the snow peas. Which I'll just throw in there with a bit of salt and pepper. I'll keep an eye on these. I'll get the uh, these will be about five to ten minutes. I'll be back and uh, we'll play that. How does that sound? Back to you in about ten minutes. Okay, everyone, back again for the panic plate. I've just um, dressed the salad with that dressing we made. I'll just toss it a little bit. Three of the whiting are cooked, and I'll show you those in a second, that's top. And three are cooking while well, we finish, so I don't know if you can see that, but they look okay actually, and they'll be tasty. They're the, they're the whiting. And I've got the other three on, just cooking. I'll just have a quick look, see that they don't burn. Right. So we've dressed the salad. I'm going to Pull the chips out of the oven, turn the oven off, Whoop. brush a spoon, a bit of moisture in those chips. We'll put them out ready to cook, we're ready to serve, they look good. I'll just turn these whiting over, I think they've been on for a few minutes. Get over your rotter. One, two, three. I've got those other whiting on a little bit of grease proof paper. I'll stir up the uh, snow peas and I think we'll start dishing up. What do you reckon? A little bit of salad. There's those tongs. A little bit of salad. That looks all right. These are made a lot. Plenty there, plenty there. We're hungry people. Bit of salad. Just check the fish. Doesn't take long to cook. A little bit more. Yeah, the snow peas are nearly ready. In fact, they are ready. I'll turn them off. Right, uh, that was tricky. I lost those tongs quickly. Here we go. Right. Few chips. On each plate. Bit of white and orange adds a little bit of colour. I'm going to check that fish and up and crack it out. Uh, that looks good. 
So we'll put them under the grease proof paper. Ready to serve up in a minute. Turn the heater off, the cooker off. Finish the chips. They taste fine. One for each person and one for the pot. Had a few too many, not to worry. Didn't work out too bad. I'll get rid of this one. Over the here. Just balance those up a bit with a few more. They look good. Right. Fish. Whiting in panko. It's fairly delicate and I'm sure I'm going to break them. As usual, I'll get the broken one. One piece of fish. Two pieces of fish, the broken back. Ah, no, don't worry. One piece of fish. Two pieces of fish. One piece of fish. Two pieces of fish. No peas, if you can see them. We'll put some of those on. Silence was golden there, wasn't it? Anyway, the snow peas are on. There's a few more there, but we've got to keep moving. Oh, the microwave's going. Get mad at me. I've got the peas that I like. I'll take this one. I like normal peas. Just microwave them up, no problems. Uh, I'll give it a go. New recipe. Tartar sauce. And plenty for later. And there we have it. Whiting in panko breadcrumbs with a few other things. Don't know if you've got a good view of that, but looks a hearty meal for us tonight. Um, that took me about an hour, probably a bit more in the end, but I think we'll enjoy it. Hope to catch you next week. See you then.